In this video, I will show you how to use pre-trained models, including how to freeze layers and do fine tuning. So uh, let's get to it right after this beautiful intro. All right, so the code in front of us right now uh, should hopefully feel very familiar. We've been using these for uh, pretty much all of the videos except this command right here, um, TensorFlow Hub. So I'm gonna go into what that is a little bit later in the, in the tutorial. But uh, first of all, if you, if you don't have it, uh, just Google Conda TensorFlow Hub and you'll get to this page. It's also gonna be in the description and you can download it with this command if you're using Conda. If you're using pip, you're just gonna do pip install TensorFlow Hub, that's it. And so, um, so what I want to do in this video is essentially three things. I'm going to first show you if you have a pre-trained model that you've previously trained. So check out my previous video on saving and loading models if you're unfamiliar with that. And then uh, I'm going to show you how to use a pre-trained Keras model. So Keras has a bunch of pre-trained models that you can just easily import. And then lastly, I'm going to show you how to load pre-trained models from TensorFlow Hub. So TensorFlow Hub has a bunch of pre-trained models and I'm gonna, as I said, I'm gonna go into that a little bit later. So uh, first of all, for this uh, pre-trained, for our own pre-trained model, I'm just gonna copy in sort of the data set, uh, data set loading, so the MNIST data set right here. And uh, so we've done this multiple videos. And uh, then I'm just gonna load a pre-trained model. So model is keras.models.load model. And this could be, I mean, if you've trained it, so it's in the pre-trained uh, folder. So it, uh, so this could be a, uh, sort of a model that you've trained, uh, or I guess it could be a model that you've found on GitHub or something like that. So you would just load that model, and then you could do print model dot summary, and then, and then what you would do is you would check uh, which of the parts you want, right? If you if this is if you want the entire model, then that's just loading the model, and then you can continue training. But normally when we're doing uh, transfer learning, we're going to pick out a couple of layers. So let's say we want, um, so let's say we want everything except the last one, right? Let's say we have, uh, we have, uh, let's say that this number of classes would be 1000 for ImageNet or something like that. But for MNIST, we would have 10 classes. So then we would have to replace this last dense layer with our own, but we could use sort of the, uh, the previous layers um, from, from that particular model. So how we would do that is uh, we would do sort of base inputs. We would do model.layers. We would take the layer that we want to for it to start in. And that's the, the first one. So we're going to do model layers zero and then dot input. Then we're going to do base outputs. And uh, why I'm calling it base is because we're going to use uh, the, this pre-trained model as our base model. And then we're going to you know sort of make a layer on top of that one. So what we, what we do here is that we sort of check which, uh, either by just checking sort of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you want the output from the 7th one, or you could count from backwards. So you could do uh, this is minus 1 and then minus 2. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do model.layers uh, and then minus 2 and then dot output. So we want the output from this flatten layer right here. Uh, in other words, we're, we're removing this layer, uh, the dense last layer. So there are other ways to do this as well. You could also do it uh, with get layer and then sort of take the name. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna stick with the index, that's fine. And then we're gonna do uh, output, we're gonna do build our own. So this could be a model, a sequential model or something like that. We're just gonna add a single layer. So all we're gonna do is layers dense 10. 10 output nodes uh, and then of base outputs right so we're gonna first run it through here uh, and then the output of base outputs is going to be sent into this this final output and then so i guess we could call it that final outputs and then we're going to do model equals keras dot uh no wait we're going to do yeah keras dot model base inputs so inputs is equal to base inputs Outputs is equal to final output and outputs, I guess, because it's we have multiple. So uh, then uh, we could do print um, 
model dot summary and uh perhaps this should also be called something else than model so we could you know we could call this a uh, new model since we've changed the the other one uh interesting interestingly we didn't actually change anything we just replaced it since the previous model that we had pre-trained it had this exact layer but you sort of get the point that you could replace this with whatever you want with different number of classes and so on um so this is just a sort of a simple example to illustrate how you would actually do it and so if we now print the new model dot summary we'll uh yeah so as i said we'll get the exact same model but this one here is uh is now a different one so if we were, for example would change this to 15 then the uh, sort of the final layer would now have 15 output nodes right here uh, but of course we want 10 in this case and then you would do as normal so you would i'm gonna copy in uh, the compile and the fit i don't think it's very relevant we've seen that in previous videos so you would just do uh, in this case new model dot compile and then new model dot fit so uh, we could now run this all right so after just a single epoch we can see that it has over 97 percent accuracy and this is only so this sort of suggests that uh, the pre-training had some effect uh, now also so we can see here that yeah after three books it has almost 99 percent and what you could also do is let's say that this uh, pre-trained model you don't want to actually train the entire thing uh, which you know uh, would be the case if you want to do fine tuning so what we would have to do is we would have to freeze the layer from this pre-trained model and how you could do that very simply is do model dot trainable uh, train equals false so that's going to freeze all of the layers and uh, one other thing you could also do is you could iterate through the layers of the model so for layer in model dot layers and then you could do yeah in this case we've already set every layer to not be trainable so we could do something like assert layer dot trainable is false but what you could also do is uh if we hadn't done this one liner right here um, for example, if you wanted to just change specific layers, uh, you could also iterate through specific layers, like doing one to five or uh, something like that. And then you could do layers dot trainable is false. Uh, yeah, so just two different ways of doing the same thing here. Yeah, so I noticed one error in when editing the video. I wrote layers dot trainable is false, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure, really sure what that, that does exactly, but we want to do a layer dot trainable is false. So uh, that was just a typo right there. Uh, some For some reason it still ran. I'm not sure what difference it made, but this is what we, you know, wh what we want to do. And, and that is already done in this one liner, so it doesn't really matter. But if you would iterate through the layers, this is how you would do it. The, the, the benefit of doing this is if we would now run this, rerun it, uh, and now I don't know if you if you saw it, but it took about 15 seconds or 16 seconds or something like that to run one epoch. And so if we now run it without, we'll, we'll see that it's almost half the actual time. So the benefit of doing this uh, fine tuning and freezing layers is that it's going to run much faster. Um, and, and sort of this is the mo I guess the common use case of uh, pre-trained models is that you would take this gigant gigantic model. Uh, freeze the layers up to some certain point and then just add a couple of linear layers at the end for your specific for your specific use case and uh, yeah so actually we can see here also is that it's uh, it actually got better performance in this case yeah sort of the same um, and that's because these these layers that I've imported had already been trained on MNIST previously so I guess that's one scenario when you're just you know you have your own model or you're you've loaded your own model I'm going to remove uh, the code for this right now and we're going to move on to the next one. So that's if you want to use a pre-trained Keras model. So so the Keras library has a lot of models uh, that you can import very easily. And uh, I'm going to show you just a just a use case of that. Uh, and the, it's going to be very similar to what we did, but using the uh, the Keras API for those models. So so let's just l create some random data just for demonstration. To run the model so we're gonna do tf.random.normal and then shape we're gonna do uh let's say three example uh five examples uh 299 299 by three 
and uh, this is just that it's gonna fit the model that we're gonna import so I'll show you in just a second but those are for the the X label or sort of the the features so they are images of 299 and then three channels for RGB and then we have TF constant and let's say 0 1 2 3 4 so five classes and they are all of a different unique class and then model is keras.applications and then here there are a bunch of different models you can use and so I'm gonna pick inception uh, v3 and then there are a bunch of arguments that you can send in here and you can read it more of the official documentations but one of the most important ones are that you can uh, do this include top equals uh, true or false and essentially what you can do here is that for the for the last final fully connected layers you could remove those and just obtain sort of feature vectors that you can then send into your own sequential model or, or something like that so this is probably one of the most important arguments and uh, we could just do that first of all and then let's do model.summary just to uh, see what it looks like yeah so what we can see here is that um, in this case actually for the inception v3 there's only a fully connected at the absolute end. So I'm not assuming you're familiar with the Inception module, but essentially it has these uh, concatenations of, of different uh, convolutional learning networks at this layer, and then it's doing a global average pooling, and then at the end it's doing a fully connected. So if you would do include top false, it would just remove this fully connected layer at the end. But uh, let's say we just want to start with this one. So what we're going to do now is... Uh, we could do this, uh, very similar to what we did previously. Uh, you could do base input is a model that layers zero dot input, and then you could do base output is a uh, base output is model dot layers, and then let's say again we just want to remove the last fully connected. Uh, but of course, if it would be several fully connected at the end, you could do minus three minus four, sort of removing the exact amount that you want. In this case, we just want to remove the last one and then dot output and then we're going to do sort of our last uh, so we'll do final outputs again we're just doing a single layer so let layers tens and then five nodes because we have five classes and then base outputs so very similar to what we did previously and then new model is keras.model inputs equals base inputs and then outputs equals final outputs and then again you would just Sort of get the compile so i'm just going to copy that in just to save some time so uh the compile so we're just using atom sparse categorical uh, nothing nothing new and then uh, we're going to do new model dot fit so let's do new model dot fit x and y and then epochs let's say 15 and then verbose equals two and this should be very quick right uh we just have five examples five random data points so let's see if it can overfit five data points using this gigantic inception v3 network base inputs is not defined all right so a base inputs right there all right so training on these uh 15 epochs went pretty quickly and as we can see it got 100 percent accuracy and the loss is very low so but of course, the this was just a demonstration of how you would import stuff using uh, this keras.applications models. And so, so what I want to show you now is how to use the TensorFlow Hub. And so TensorFlow Hub, essentially, and it's uh, just tfhub.dev. It's essentially where you can get a lot of different models, pre-trained models for different scenarios. So let's say we just want images. Then you can sort of, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of models here that you can just, that you can go through and just check. Uh, in this case, let's say we want the Inception v3 again, so we can just go to this this one right here, and then uh, it has this is for the feature vector. So this is a uh, similarly to the Keras one where you could include top equals false, that would give you a feature vector, and uh, that's exactly what this does. So they've separated the Inception v3 uh, for a model that has the top of the fully connected ones, and then one that just returns the feature vector, and then what you do is you just copy the URL and when you have the URL and then you can go back to the code so uh, again let's do some random data so let's do tf random normal shape is uh, 5 299 2993 sort of exactly what we just did for the loading from the Keras 
And again, we're loading the exact same model. So this is not going to be anything new, just showing you how to do it with TensorFlow Hub. So then you would do a URL equals, and then you would paste the URL right here. And then you would do a base model and then hub equals Keras layer uh, URL and then input shape uh, 299, 2993. And then what you would do is you would do model equals Keras sequential. And you would uh, then do uh, the base model, right? Which is not including the fully connected layers. And then you could add whatever layers you want. So layers dense, 128 nodes, activation equals, I don't know, relu. Uh, layers dense, 64, activation equals uh, relu. And then, yeah, let's do one final layers dense of 10 up, 10 up, of five output nodes. We just have five classes. And then again, you would do model.compile and model.fit. So I'm just going to copy those in. And then uh, I guess sort of one thing I missed to do in, for the Keras model is that, of course, you can do as the exact first example that we did. So you could do base model.trainable equals false uh, so that uh, you're, using, you're doing fine tuning. Um, I should have probably showed that also for the other one because th this, is, th this is something you can do for all models and uh yeah just for the example let's try and run this and, and see what it looks like all right so in this scenario it didn't actually overfit too much so we would have to probably run it for longer but as we can see at least it, it obtained a 100 percent accuracy and uh yeah that's pretty much it those are the examples i wanted to show you um sort of different ways you can do pre-training and fine-tuning uh, freezing layers and so on uh, hopefully this video was useful for you. Um, if you have any questions, then leave them in the comment. And uh, hope to see you in the next video.